Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. This video is about me hitting a major milestone. And in projects, uh, there are several milestones that can happen along the course of a project. This milestone is really marking the start the finish, uh, the uh, starting line for me, not the finishing line, the, the starting line. I am now at a point where I can start to learn about my Edge 8 HD and how to capture good data and process that data in PixInsight. And in order to get to the starting line, I had to figure out my back focus. And uh, I'm going to share with you uh, where I'm at on my back focus, and then I'll also share an image uh, with, that I took uh, the other night here at home in the backyard under Bortle 78 Skies. So here is the current configuration. You'll notice that I still have my U59 and my Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance on the top rail. They're acting as counterweights right now, in a sense. I'm uh, working with the ASI Air Plus. Whether or not I ever go back to Nina, that'll be decided down the road. I'm not going to sell the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance or the U59. They're going to sit there now for a little bit uh, while I use the ASI Air Plus with the Edge HD. And I also have the 533. MC Pro camera in this configuration here. I'm going to work with that for a little bit while my ASI 294mm Pro allows me to have a larger pixel size for now working with the reducer, the 0.7x reducer at about 1422 millimeter focal length f7. I'm going to go with the ASI 533MC Pro for a bit. I'm going to run with that for a bit. Here's what my image train looks like now. Have the uh, Celestron uh, reducer, 0.7x. Uh, this is the SCT adapter. Here is the Celestron OAG. My Guide camera is the 174mm Pro. I've got an, uh, the camera adapter here. I've got an 11 millimeter spacer here. And then right now I have a five position filter wheel where I have my IR cut filter plus the Optolong L Extreme um, filter in there. And then of course the uh, 533MC Pro. The reason I did have a filter drawer, but what I think now I can do with this 20 millimeter um, thickness of this uh, filter wheel and the sensor being set back about 6.5 millimeter in the 533 camera, those dimensions would be the same if I wanted to swap in my 8 position filter wheel and my ASI 294mm Pro. So at some point if I want to move over to the 294mm Pro and the 8 position filter wheel, I believe I should be able to swap that out for this 5 position and the 533 and not affect my back focus. Now the caveat there is differences in filter thickness because you have to allow for that uh, when you're uh, figuring out your back focus. But, um, you know, this is a major milestone for me. I ordered the Edge HD 8 in July. All the pieces, I think, started to come in where I had everything in October, and now it's January 28th. So it took me a while. I was close before in getting to back focus. I had some elongation uh, that I didn't quite understand, uh, but that was when I was running with the ASI 294. I made a decision to swap out cameras, and and that kind of set me off um, 
on a new uh, journey of trying to get the right back focus, but I, I think I'm there now. Now, uh, one thing I want to point out is that um, here is the corrector plate. Now, something I noticed when I came back from Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station down in Landers, California, the last new moon weekend, I didn't quite understand what was going on with my star shapes. And what it turned out is uh, two of these screws were really backed out a lot. And uh, that was not the case before I went down to Landers. <clears throat> so something I got to keep an eye on, since I'm transporting this uh, telescope in my van, and while I think I have it properly cushioned and everything, is the vibration from the road causing these screws to back out during my trip. So that's something I got to keep an eye on. Once I figured that out the other night, um, then I was able to do a collimation and get it reasonably close. Uh, again, I say this milestone is the starting line on how to use my Edge HD8. I have to learn uh, how to do proper collimations. In my backyard, if I try to point to the zenith, there's a big old redwood hanging over where I can't see the stars at the zenith um, and I have to have my telescope in a certain position to be able to do a polar alignment. I have a lot of uh, a lot of challenges here trying to do anything in my backyard and part of that was what took me so long in getting to uh, the proper back focus. The other thing of course in Northern California we had a lot of a lot of weather. But let me just quickly say the other thing that kind of threw me a little bit and this is in uh, no way um, a slam against Joe or anything. Joe's Astro's uh, video here was very helpful to me to give me an idea of what I was trying to shoot for as far as back focus distance. And if you do searches uh, on the web, cloudy nights, you know, you'll see this 105 millimeter uh, number oftentimes uh, referenced. And so Joe had his measurements here that he was using to get to uh, 104.85 he did not uh, um, put anything in for a filter and again I think that's going to vary based upon the filters you have because they'll be at different thicknesses so what I did is I laid out Joe's measurements here of how he got to 104.8 uh, without anything for the filter and then I took my calibers, calipers and I started measuring things and I was getting slightly different readings um, so, you know, I wasn't quite sure where I was measuring, you know, when, when things fit together and, you know, how, you know, so I was just doing physical measurements and I came up with a little bit different than what uh, Joe had. And then I put in the filter. And so I think I'm about 105.972 for my current back focus. So I'm thinking maybe I can fine-tune that possibly a little bit. Um, I do have a 10 millimeter spacer now. I could reduce that a little bit. So again, I'll, I'll figure this out as I go forward. But I'm you know, very happy I finally got to the starting gate. And in order to do anything, I really think you have to get your back focus correct and then other things can fall in place like collimation and and uh, and other aspects so uh, I'm very happy there just a quick note here I'm uh, figuring out the weights of my uh, Edge HD 8 uh, to see where that might fall within the payload capacity of the ZWO AM5 um, mount is it a mount head unit whatever so that's just something I'm looking at there. So um, let's go into what I was able to do. Uh, let's uh, bring that, that out. All right, so this is my, and let me get rid of this for me to see. So here is a 52-minute uh, integrated image using my ASI 533 MC Pro with the Optolong Alex Stream uh, filter. It's got a lot of issues, 
But now that I'm at the starting gate, I have an opportunity to learn how to minimize issues. How can I make my stars rounder? You know, how can I optimize my guiding? And is my back focus still off a little bit? So, you know, again, I'm just on the front end of learning how to use an Edge H HD at 14, 22 millimeters. So it took me a while to get here, but I'm here. And now I get to sit down and learn. And I'm also going to have to really dig into Pix Insight and understand the tools that help that can help me make up for some of the inadequacies uh, possibly in the data. So I have a lot to learn. Up to now I really haven't, working with my Xenostar Z61, I just kind of did quick and dirty uh, processing just to see some kind of image, but now I'm really got to understand what opportunities exist for me to optimize uh, the data and try to make up for some of its faults. So anyway, um, Here's where I'm at on the 20, 28th day of uh, January in 2023. Uh, good timing. Uh, uh, galaxy, you know, the nebulas are starting to uh, uh, not be available in the sky. So I really need to start imaging uh, galaxies, uh, which is my current interest. And so I'm looking forward to going to Lander's uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station uh, in Lander's, California on uh, probably down there on the 14th and 15th the weather right now this many weeks out is forecast to look good again down in landers it's always the wind and with the larger profile tube it's more susceptible to wind um, but if i don't run my uh, dew shield on it and generally i don't have to deal with dew down at landers uh, then it 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 can handle the wind a little bit better so we'll just have to see again I'm starting the process and I really need to understand finally what does seeing limited mean because my ability to optimize the data is going to be impacted by the seeing conditions and I really need to understand that uh, that relationship better than I have and um, again I do you know, maybe I should be running my 533 MC Pro and bin 2 at times. Uh, should I really be using my 294 mm with the 4.63 pixel size? So again, these are all the things I'm going to learn relative to the Edge HD 8 uh, in the months uh, uh, in the uh, going forward. So I, I've got a lot to learn. I'm just at a starting gate. But uh, I was happy to see this, and this is, you know, under my uh, Bortle 7 8 skies. So, yes, it can be done in an urban environment. My issue, again, with my backyard is the target is available for so few number of hours because of the redwoods and the two story buildings and all that. But uh, I can collect some data, and. Uh, this looked uh, pretty clean with the uh, L-Extreme uh, filter. So that's where I'm at. Just want to give you an update. Man, I thought I'd never get uh, to the point where I'd have my back focus where it needed to be. And again, I still may be a little bit off. I'm keeping the door open to that. And uh, what I like about Landers is it's a concrete pad that's level. And I think it gives me the best opportunity right now uh, to go forward. And I think uh, having the mount level for right now is going to be important to me. And being able to swing the, the tube to, up to the zenith uh, for collimation is going to be a big plus as well. So now i got to make sure uh, what techniques are available to me to do a... Uh, proper collimation, uh, which I think will help with the roundness of my stars and those type of things. But again, I got, I got so much to learn. I still don't know what I don't know at working at 1422 um, millimeter focal length, uh, F7, but I do have a fairly good mount in the EQ6R Pro, so we'll see. We'll see what I can do. Other than that, um, 
I just really want to get out an image now. Unfortunately, in San Mateo here, I think the next clear night, there might be a clear night on the, um, on the 30th, but it is so hard for me to get a polar alignment done in my backyard right now. It's so many challenges. Uh, I'm surprised that I'm, I'm, I'm able to do it at all. Uh, so maybe on the 30th I can go out. I started shooting the Cone Nebula uh, the other night as well. Uh, got a, I only got nine four-minute exposures on that one again to uh, so maybe I'll uh, try to tackle that again but um, I do love the one inch square of the uh, 533 MC Pro sensor to me just makes the image look right but uh, enough about that I've gone on too long all right just want to give you an update where I'm at and um, I'm gonna sit down now and process some other data I collected um, all the way back in uh, November and I'll get those uh, posted up on my Astro bin. Uh, so I think I have a pretty good workflow now for working with the Optolong L Extreme. I'm going to document it today as I run through some additional data and build a little document and uh, just go forward and keep learning about uh, PixInsight and opportunities to optimize my data. Uh, collection using the Edge HD 8. All right. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Woo! I got my back focus pretty close. I, I tell you, there was times when I wasn't sure if I was going to get it there. I mean, I knew I would get it there eventually. Um, and it wasn't something I could throw money at, you know. I just had to uh, uh, spend the time and, uh, and and get it done. So Joe Astro's uh, measurements are uh, really good. Um, again, filter differences uh, can impact impact where you actually wind up. But um, thank you, Joe, for that video. It helped me a lot, and uh, sure appreciate it. And I think I left you uh, a thank you comment as well. Uh, so really appreciate it. Okay. Other than that, wherever you may be in the world, may you have clear skies. See you next time.